Hi, everybody. Hey, I hope everybody is doing great out there. It's good for you to see me. I can't see you, but uh, I'm sure you're doing great. Uh, welcome back to Church on the Rock. It's wonderful. Uh, we did start uh, Sunday church last Sunday on the 4th, and so this will be our second return this coming this Sunday. And I uh, just wanted to do just a couple little reminders, some announcements. Wednesday night, the 20th, we are going to be having a youth group. And I believe, yes, youth group starting Wednesday night, the 20th of May, starts at 6 o'clock. That will be wonderful for them to get back together. Also, Wednesday night, the 20th of May, is the beginning of youth group starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, we plan on starting church on that same night. Wednesday night, the 20th, we'll be returning for church at 7 o'clock. Youth at 6, church at 7. So look forward to seeing you all for that. Also remember, uh, Nathan Briggs has started a men's ministry Bible study. And if you're interested in that, by all means, I know Nathan would love to have you. It's going to be a great time. Um there's just a number of things I wanted to just kind of recap. Of course, all of uh, this time that we've been out of church, we have uh, uh, really enjoyed doing our online services, and it's been wonderful because what we have found is there are so many other folks out there. The views um, have been tremendous. I don't know if you're getting a link from someone or someone is forwarding an email to you, but the the views that have just been tremendous. And so even though we're starting church back under with some guidelines, we're going to continue to have the online services so that the people who are viewing from home, uh, for a couple of reasons, viewing from home, they can continue to get this. There's a couple of reasons people are viewing from home. One is uh, maybe they're not even logistically close to this area, and that's the best way for them to connect with us. So that's wonderful. There are others maybe that can't get out of the home or are not ready to get out of the home at this point, still exercising a little social distancing and some self-isolation. That is perfectly fine because we love you just the same, no matter what. And I want to touch on that for just a moment. We are exercising uh, some good uh, safety and health protocols. Uh, we have changed our seating arrangement. We spread our chairs way out. We only have one door. Uh, the fellowship hall is closed. We will not be serving coffee. We do not have uh, children's ministry in the morning. The children and the youth are staying with their parents during service, and that's fine. Of course, we do have the nursing mother's room, which can also, if you have a a young one that needs to be changed or a young one that just needs to be out of the service for a minute, uh, feel free to use the mother's nursing room area for that as well. So um, we're doing everything we can to make sure that we provide a safe setting for everyone, but we're full of faith and, and our faith goes before us. We want to make sure that we still re remain certain that our God is sovereign and his hand is on us, and we believe that he is watching over us uh, as he has told us in his promises over and over. Uh, we, Like in Psalm 91, we are resting under his wings. He is protecting us constantly. So we want to make sure that we uh, remain vigilant uh, with our safety protocols, but also trusting that God is going to take care of us. We know that for certain, uh, but but we certainly want to make sure that we provide an atmosphere where everyone feels comfortable. Uh, you know, handshaking and hugging is kind of off limits. We love to do that, but it's kind of off limits right now. So uh, we just want to make ourselves available to anyone who would like to attend church in a safe environment and just enjoy corporate worship and hearing the word together. So those were the important things I believe that I wanted to touch on. The second thing I had in mind, I wanted to talk a little bit about worship. Um, I, I just happened on a song the other day that I just 
I remember it as a young man. This was popular in the early 70s, so a number of you out there will remember it. It was recorded here in the United States by Roberta Flack. I won't bore you with all the details, but uh, it is a beautiful song. And the years that I heard it, I just hadn't paid any attention to the lyrics. And the name of the song is The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. Let me just read just a couple of the short verses to you. I want you to hear the words. Not being saying, not the beautiful music or a beautiful singing voice. I just want to read some of these lyrics to you and let that sink in. Okay, here we go. The first time ever I saw your face, I thought the sun rose in your eyes, and the moon and the stars were the gifts that you gave to the dark and the endless skies. The first time ever I kissed your mouth, I felt the earth move in my hands like the trembling heart of a captive bird that was there at my command. Now those words, if you let them settle, and if you think of when that song was written, it was written to the one that you love. The words are very uh, deep words, they're very strong words, and I just want to encourage you all uh, for a moment in your worship time. Many times I think, I, I can't speak for everyone, that's for sure, but we get caught up in the moment of the music, and many times if there's a, uh, the lyrics are displayed and there's scenery behind it, and uh, we're listening to different instruments and things like that, um, I think sometimes we lose the meaning of the song, and I, I want to make sure uh, for myself, and this is what's been on me, this is what's been in my heart for the last week and a half or so, and I just want to share it with you all. If, if uh, you would give yourself just to reading the lyrics of a song, a praise and worship song, and take note of the of the words that you're saying to the Lord and let them pour out of your heart with sincerity in a poetic fashion, just as in the Song of Songs and the love words that were spoken. Uh, we believe that was written by Solomon. Uh, those words of love and descriptions of your love and uh, that book appears to be God speaking back and forth to Israel or Jesus speaking to his church, the body, about that love that they have for one another. It's just a tremendous thing. And I don't, um, I, it's just really been on me. I wanted to encourage you all to absorb and make the, the words that you're singing to the Lord, let them pour out of your heart like words that you say to your first love, the first time, the, the things that uh, make you different. Remember the time that you first met the Lord. So uh, if I could just encourage you with those things, that's, uh, that's what's on my heart. I wanted to share that. But uh, if I can, let's, let's pray. We'll close in prayer. And I sure hope to see you soon. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for this time to share just what's on my heart. And Father, we are here because you love us. We are here because you first loved us, because you gave your son. Even before we knew you, while we were yet in sin, you gave your son for each one of us. So Father, I pray that we um, have a new awakening, a new awareness of your deep, deep love that you have for us and that we would somehow uh, be recipients of that love and be able to reciprocate, to be able to give that love back to you, to pour out our hearts to you, Father. So, Father, I just thank you for this time to share. I thank you for everyone that's watching. I pray, Lord, that you would bless every heart, that you would bless every home. And, Father, we thank you for each one that's watching today. And I pray your blessing over each one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. I hope to see you soon. 
Thank you so much for being a part of our family. Thank you so much for your wonderful giving that you've given to this church uh, and just your prayers that you send out, your love that you send out. And thank you for being a part of us. I'll catch you very soon, okay? Bye-bye. All right, good morning, uh, Church on the Rock. Um, as we prepare for this message uh, for May 17th, year 2020, uh, I'd like to say that it was so good just to be able to see actually faces last week and to have so many of our people there and uh, just to be able to worship together. And it's, that's such an encouraging uh, synergy that comes about when we worship together. I know there's several of you out there that probably will not be coming yet for a while till you feel comfortable, and that's quite all right. We're going to continue on with our video messages, too, so you'll always be able to get that uh, along with the worship songs we'll be using. Uh, so just to, want to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. So, Lord, I just uh, just thank you for this opportunity, and, and just thank you for those that are listening online and, and uh Lord, through this video, and we just ask, uh, Lord, this for your presence. Uh, Lord, even if they're they're sitting, uh, Lord, alone in their home or in their apartment, Lord, that you just grant them the grace and your presence, that they would feel your presence just as real as if they were with us in the service. So, Lord, I just ask that you're just grace and just for wisdom. I ask, Lord, that you give me the very words to articulate your heart. And Lord, I just give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, first, I'd first like to start with actually a prayer request that I uh, we received this last night uh, from uh, Cindy Jacobs. And Cindy Jacobs, uh, she has one of the largest uh, intercessory organizations across, uh, actually across, it's international, across the world. Uh, and she has sent out a, a prayer warning or a, a for us to pray, and I'll just kind of read it to you, but uh, it was, says, Dear Prayer Warrior, in the past few days I have become increasingly uncomfortable and concerned that something is being planned on a terrorist level to send chaos and confusion into the nation. I have pulled other reliable sources and they have felt a similar sensing. Now this could possibly happen on various levels. For instance, we could experience a bioterrorism, an economic terrorism, and a multi-site physical attack on our nation's capital. Various other soft targets could also be in the sights of wicked people who hate the United States. So therefore, let us put our shields up in prayer and protect the nation. If we do our job right, we may or may not know what we have prevented. So I think that's something for us to heed, uh, to be in prayer about during this coming, especially this coming week, uh, where there have been different prophetic voices have felt like, you know, that our nation could be in danger. And I think we need to uh, to be a people who are interceding and asking for protection over our nation. So Lord, we just ask right now that you would just uh, build a hedge protection around our nation from any terrorist attack in whatever form that might be. We ask, Lord, that you would just cause that plan to be uncovered, to come to light, and be stopped. And Lord, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, the title of uh, this message today <clears throat> is called, In Changing Times, Trust in the Lord. You know, I, I was listening to uh, some of the newscasts and, and what our uh, administration has said, you know, regarding uh, the, the current economic crisis along with the, the, the virus crisis and, and how their hope is that it would be a, a V recovery, which means that uh, just as fast as it went down, that it would go up and return to where it was. Uh, there's probably uh, not quite as many people now hoping for that as it were before, but I think it's something we can pray for and ask the Lord to. Uh, because in the natural, that would seem uh, pretty hard to do right now, especially as long as we're having to be locked down. In fact, I see, you know, as I look at that, that V, I almost see it, if you turn that upside down, you have a pyramid. And 
this is just my opinion, okay, that we are just kind of at the apex, at the top of that pyramid, and the, 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 with our economies, mainly been the service industry, it's been the airlines, it's been the restaurants and the hotels um, that have been affected uh, to a great degree. Uh, there's others, as you look on down, that really life has gone on as it has before. Uh, we have several people in our congregation who uh, work in the construction trades, and they haven't seen any difference. Life has gone on just like it has before. But with so many of those sayings, it's like a trickle-down effect. One thing affects something else that affects something else. And for instance, in the construction industry, it's uh, what's being constructed now, what's being built, uh, is things that have already been in, in the past, already been, loans have been received, the payments have been made, the plans have been put in progress, and so there's usually at least a six months or a year lag time before a lot of these other industries, as we go down from that pyramid, are affected. But I think before this is all over, we will all be affected to some degree. But I still pray that, yes, we would have a quick recovery. I pray that this, this virus would just dry up and be gone. But I think we also need to prepare our hearts uh, for times of shaking. And while this is my opinion with the economy, I do feel like from the Lord that we are just now beginning into a time of shakings, into a time of, we talked about before, the birth pains, where the birth pains become more intense. And again, the, the length between the contractions uh, draw closer together. And I think as we go on in the, in the, in the coming years, we're going to see more of that. And so for us as Christians and for us as a church, we need to be uh, grounded upon the rock, steadfast, no matter what we see happening. But, you know, when the familiar is shaken uh, and our comfort zone is shaken and we can't see the future clearly, during those times, that's when we, we need to learn to trust in the Lord. I used to say to, when I was pastoring that Baptist church, uh, been a couple different times, I would tell them that, you know, you must prepare to live in two different worlds. And what I meant by that was you need to be prepared to live in the world they were living at the time or that we were living in prior to uh, 2020, uh, where you make plans uh, by what the wisdom you have and the wisdom that God gives you and you, you look at situations and you look at the economy and you look at needs and whether it's, it's planning your, uh, your future for your children and, and what would be a good, good career choice. I remember uh, when our, our boys were, were growing up and, and during that time they were going to college and making choices about career and when they to go. In, uh, in the medical field and one went to law and, and so you make decisions based on okay what colleges, what courses do they need, uh, where to go to law school, whatever. And so you, you, make, you make decisions based on what you know and from what you see, uh, just with the wisdom that God's given you. But even in that time, even in normal times, I want to read uh, in James 4 in verses 13 to 16 it says, now listen now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, will spend a year there and carry on business and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that happens for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, your boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin. So even in times of normal, what we call normal economic times, and where the future isn't cloudy, we need to be, again, leaning upon the Lord and not our own understanding. Now, Webster Dictionary defines trust. And again, that's what... A, I want to focus on today is trusting in the Lord. It, it says it is assured reliance on another's integrity, veracity, justice, confidence, and faith. So again, it's a sure reliance on another's integrity. In this case, we're talking about the Lord. 
you know, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, Brittany had mentioned, uh, she said you made a statement that you can't trust someone you don't know. And how true that is. And that's why it's so important that we have that intimacy with the Lord who we're trusting in. And that brought me to a question that, that I want to ask you. Uh, and that is this. Let's say you, you have faith in God. But do you trust him? Because I see kind of a difference between faith and and trust. It's almost like for me that trust is even a level above faith. You know, with trust, we give up our rights to determine how something will turn out, and we leave it in the Lord's hands. You know, it's like Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and and uh, and he told the Lord, said, you know, the Father, he said, you know, if there is another way, Lord, but not my will but your will be done. And so it's where we come to that place as we turn the results completely over to him. We say, Lord, we trust you. We're putting ourselves in your hands. And to give you an example of that, uh, in Daniel chapter 3, let me look that up real quick. Prophet Daniel chapter 3. And this is a, a familiar story. Uh, again, probably one you, you learned in, in Bible school if you're uh, children. The three, verse 13 through 18. And this is where King Nebuchadnezzar had, had built an image and everyone was supposed to, whenever they heard the, the trumpet or the bagpipes, they were to bow and worship the image. Which, as a little side note, just think of that. Well, the Antichrist is not just taking the mark. It's worshiping the image. So, anyway. So, there were the three Hebrew children, Meshach, Abednego, Shadrach, refused to do that. And so, in verse 13, it says, Fear us with rage, Nebuchadnezzar, informed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zith, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Now Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude towards him changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw, throw them into the burning furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, their trousers, their turban, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. Now the king commanded, the king's commandment was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound 
and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. So they were miraculously delivered from that. But the point is, in verse 18, it says, But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. So they knew that the Lord had power to deliver them. They didn't know for sure if he would, but they were willing to place themselves in his hands. You know, Job 13, 15 says, Though he slay me, yet I will hope or trust in him. Proverbs 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. So that is where we are to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And sometimes we have to lean not upon our own understanding because sometimes we don't have that understanding. We realize it. So we cry out to the Lord for that wisdom and understanding. And that we are to acknowledge him. And that promise is that if we will do that, that he will make his way straight, our way straight. Isaiah 30 verse 15 says, This is what the sovereign Lord says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. In quietness and in trust is your strength. You know, many times we may be shocked by, by an announcement or something that happens. It may be, maybe it's a call from the doctor's office and it informs you that it's cancer. Or maybe it's a call from a loved one that there's been an accident. And so there's, a, there's that initial shock that hits you. And that's, that's natural. But, but what it's saying is that it's in quietness and trust that in moments like that is where we need to be able to take a few moments to steady ourselves, to sit down, and in quietness, trust in the Lord. Just with a, a, a prayer to say, Lord, I need you. I need your help. I need your presence. Settle the emotions that are rolling inside of me. The fear, the anxiety, the thoughts that are coming. Lord, I, I want to still myself. I want to quiet myself. And I want to hear from you. Psalms 56, verse 3 and 4. When I was afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust and I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? So we're not to fear man. It's the fear of man. But to trust fully in the Lord. Romans 9.33 The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. In Psalm 62.8 Trust in him at all times, O people, pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. And it's interesting in that verse, I, there's the word both trust and refuge. As I was going through looking up, actually through, through Strong's Concordance uh, with the King James Version, I noticed there were a lot more verses, especially through the Psalms and Proverbs, where the, the word trust was used, but in the NIV, which I'm reading from today, or the uh, EAS, or the, the different modern versions, translated that actually into the word and used the word refuge. And I had never noticed that before. And so I was trying to look at the connection, okay, the, the connection between trust and the connection being refuge. And I looked up the, the actual definition of refuge, and it says a condition of being safe or shelter from pursuit, danger, or trouble. Again, a condition of being safe 
are sheltered from pursuit, from danger, or from trouble. And so there's a major connection there between trust and refuge, that the Lord is to be our refuge. And speaking of being a refuge, and that's probably the most famous psalm that we think of is, is Psalms 91. So let's go ahead and look through, through Psalms 91. And I, especially during these, ta- these days coming and the coming years, I think we need to really meditate upon it, uh, absorb it, get it in our, in our spirits. So we'll start Psalms 91. And it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So in those first couple of verses, there is, it, it tells us that, that actually Psalms 91 is not necessarily automatic. It, it's conditional. Because it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. So that's where we need to be. We need to be in that place. It's not someone who, uh, who uh, casually had maybe one day said the, the sinner's prayer, went forward to service, and then the rest of their life just kind of living their life on their own. It's for those who are in, in intimacy with the Lord, who spend time with the Lord, who dwell in that place of the Most High. And it goes on, verse 3, it says, Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. The pestilence and the plague. Verse 7, a thousand may fall at your right side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If, and again, verse 9, a very big if there, if you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near you. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So great and mighty promises that are in that psalm. That if we will dwell with him, if we make him the most high, your dwelling, that all these promises will come to us. And so it behooves us to to. Stay in that place of intimacy, getting to know the Lord, spend time with the Lord. Now, a couple of verses I do want to make a comment on, and that's verses 11 and 12. First, it says that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Now, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now, if we take that verse and we go over to the book, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, and I want to look at verses 5 through 7. This is when Jesus was sent to the wilderness where he was tempted for 40 days where he fasted. And I'm going to start in verse 5, chapter 4. 
It says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus replied to him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So while we have the promises of, of Psalms 91, we also have to realize we can't be stupid. We, uh, we don't test the Lord. We trust the Lord, but we don't test the Lord. And in the thinking about in that place of being a, a place of, of refuge and being him being our trust and he, him being our refuge, I think that we also need to be a refuge for others. Just as we find refuge in the Lord, that there's going to be opportunities for us coming in the future as a, as a corporate body for us to be a refuge for people for you as individuals to be a refuge to someone and to lead them to that place of the ultimate refuge, which is the Lord. Because the unknown can bring fear and anxiety. But it can also bring excitement and opportunity. Now for someone like me who doesn't necessarily like change, who is very regimented, uh, I need to change and, and be able to see it as a place of excitement and opportunity. And some of you who may get bored easy, it probably will not be a problem for you. So it can either bring fear or anxiety, and it can also bring excitement an opportunity. Now one thing that I think helps us all through these times of these, these times of changes, these times of unsettlement, these times of shakings, times of birth pains, is our own testimony. And I, I don't mean our testimony necessarily of, of our salvation, but but our testimony of God's faithfulness in our lives. And as I was thinking back on this, I was thinking of all times that for Glenn and I how, you know, it seemed like so many times in our life Whenever we did something, was at the not at the what would be in the natural the right time, uh, whether it was when we were first getting married and had nothing, we both were student teaching, and but how God provided, and as we went along, uh, I can I can think of a time when uh, you know when. We made a decision that uh, that we need to, to uh, at that time, Glenda was teaching and, and I was working, but we felt strongly that we were to, to homeschool both our boys after our second son was born. And when again, when I went to put pencil to paper and figure it out, uh, it wasn't coming out. You know, I didn't see how we we're going to be able to do this, but we felt strongly that we were to do it. And so we went ahead and made that, that decision to do it, and, and basically we, we pulled, uh, and she uh, retired from teaching, and she'd only been there seven or eight years, and we took that, her retirement, and, and put it in a CD, and, and we just figured we, we would supplement our income with that, because my income wasn't going to be enough. Well, as it turned out, uh, and it was a, you know, a bit, it would seem like a natural bad time, but the Lord blessed us time and time again. Uh, we never did have to touch that uh, finances. In fact, at that time, uh, the interest rate was like for CD was like 13 point something percent. And we had to use the rule, rule of 72. You don't, it didn't take very long to double your, your, your money. So not only did we able to do that, but it wasn't a very short time. We paid the cars off. And then after time of that, we ended up paying the house off. And so God was just faithful and blessing us in that. And I remember when, uh, when, uh, I had got a promotion and had been in that position probably a year, and then nationwide my position was uh, was eliminated, and so we were in that place of wondering, okay, uh, what's going to happen here, you know? And uh, the Lord again 
you know, there's an overall sense of, of just peace. I mean, there were times, too, you wondered and you thought, well, what's going to come of this? But anyway, the Lord blessed us. We had already moved out to the country by this time, which was another step of faith at the time because I was working downtown. And uh, so then, you know, from Grandview, clear out by Drexel. And so it was a hundred and some miles round trip every day. Uh, it didn't seem like that was um, maybe wisdom, but yet we felt that was, again, something we were supposed to do. So we did it. And the Lord blessed us, and within two and a half years, after because that job was eliminated, I got slotted in uh, to a couple of different jobs. One peculiar is officer in charge there, and then to uh, Adrian's postmaster there just for two years, and then on to Drexel, I was only six miles from home, uh, and I had a, a saved grade because I was a higher level than these offices were that I was placed in as postmaster, and uh, God just blessed us. And so often that has happened. Uh, just seeing his faithfulness. And so you build up a history uh, in God. And that's one of the major things that we need to look back upon the history of God's faithfulness that as we see things begin to shake and unsettle us that God has been faithful in the past, he'll be faithful in the, in the future. Now, Glenn always gets a, a word uh, before the beginning of each year. And when I say a word, I mean it's like a phrase usually. And I think this was two years ago. She got the word, be ready for rapidly changing conditions. Uh, and we sure have seen this happen on this year. But who would have thought what it was? I also think back, you know, at in 1 Samuel 17, we won't look at scripture, but again, it's a story you're all very familiar with, David and, and Goliath, okay? But again, David had a history because he said that David had killed the lion and the bear. And so when he got to face Goliath, it says he ran to the battle line because he had a history in the Lord. And that's why it's so important, again, to review your history, review the faithfulness of God in your life throughout the years. And so I would say, yes, there are giants coming. But God, the Lord, is raising up a company of giant slayers. There are going to be issues coming. There are going to be problems. There are going to be shakings. There are going to be birth pains that are coming our way. But we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And our trust is in the Lord. Which brought me to that, that song. I'm going to say it was an older song. It's not as old as I thought, actually, but... And it goes, only trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So my encouragement for you today is in these times, in these times when we can't really see the future, when it's very murky and cloudy out there and we can't see the way forward, it's a time for us to go deep in the Lord, to get oil, focus on him, and to trust in the Lord, knowing that he is faithful to meet every need. So Lord, I just thank you for this people. I just ask the Lord that you would just comfort them, that you grant them the grace, that place, Lord, of truly trusting you with all their hearts. Lord, of seeking you and that intimacy with you, knowing that these things that are happening may be surprises to us, but they're not surprises to you. That you knew this from the, you knew the, the end before the beginning, Lord. You, you had it all. Nothing takes you by surprise. So we just ask for your grace and your trust just to well up, just that confidence and, and peace in you, Lord, that peace that passes all understanding that we as a people of God would be able to walk in peace. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.